afternoon again. I'm going to do another one this evening while I'm at it. Ignore the bright sun shiny spot over my right shoulder as best as you can. That's just the sun coming through at an angle on the window, but it helps create light in the room. Uh, this time, we're going to take a step of a little, a little different step. We're still going to stick with the Jim Beam theme. We're going to do the Devil's Cut. Now, both Swami and Scott Stestemis have recently done the Devil's Cut. Well, Swami doesn't care for it as much, and if you know Malta to Montreal, that's Swami. It wasn't his thing. His thing was, it'll get the job done if all you want to do is get drunk. Scott's Test Dummies, they had a little different view of it than he did. But what Jim Beam has done, if I understand the process correctly, is after the barrels are done and they poured all of the, all of the alcohol out of the barrels, they take and they boil water, and I may be wrong about this, but if this is what I, I read one time, and I'm quoting from you from a very faulty memory, but they run water through it. If I remember right, it was like a boiled water, and they rinse out the barrels really, really well, let them soak, rinse them out, and it's that water from those barrels that they use to proof down the whiskey. Now, if I remember correctly, that's how it was done. It, I'll just read a little bit on the side. Extracted from the heart of the Kentucky Jim Beam Devil's Cut, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is made from made for those who take their whiskey seriously. And yes, you better take your whiskey seriously with this one. It is 45% alcohol by volume. While bourbon ages and the angel's share evaporates, some of that remains is trapped inside the barrel. This is the devil's cut. We extract this dark, intense liquid from our charred white oak barrels and blend it with the extra aged bourbon. Jim Beam's devil's cut is a distinct bourbon full of rich, intense flavors. And yes, it is. And I believe I already alluded to it. It's 45% alcohol by volume, about a 375. It's not, it's not a bad bourbon, but it's not going to be everybody's thing. When you think of this, when you try this, I'm letting it cool just a little bit in the glass. When you think of this, when you try this, the thought that comes to my mind is this is a man's man whiskey. You still got the barrel, but you've got a lot of spicy, intense flavors going on there. And a lot of very intense overriding flavors. That being said, let's get to it. So we have increased to 5% alcohol by volume over the typical white label. A couple of legs, it's just kind of moving slow. There's not a lot developing there just a you can see the rim around the glass and the beads developing along the the uh, the rim where it's sloshed up but there's not a lot of heavy beading or nothing running so I think it's f fairly viscous but probably not as there's a bead going now they are starting to run now and it is about the same as the the uh, white label. It's maybe an amber, a couple of shades darker. Instead of one shade darker, maybe a couple of shades darker than the white label is. And the wood shines. And you're going to get wood in this one. This was designed to get the wood. And get the vanilla. You get that oak and you get that char. Oh, yeah. More of a burnt brown sugar, less caramel. And more of a black pepper spice on the nose. 
than anything else. Maybe maybe a slight cinnamon, but that black pepper spice is really shining through right now on the nose. Man, it's it's wood, it's oak and spades. And even a slight bit of maple smell in there. I don't know how it's getting that. I've been getting that lately on a couple of different things. I don't know what's going on. I had maple syrup pancakes for breakfast this morning. Maybe that's lingering. But that was 10 hours ago. Almost just a faint maple. Not maple syrup, just maple tree. I used Again, I used to work for my dad a long time ago. And we made hardwood doors for a living. Well, we made softwood too, pine, but we cut up, you name it, white oak, red oak, maple, cherry, mahogany, American Philippine mahogany, uh, Lord, walnut, ash, pecan. Pecan was the worst. It chips so bad. Ash chips bad too, but pecans are grade worse. We even made doors out of willow one time, if I remember correctly. Can't recall ever building any out of cottonwoods, though. That's a really soft wood. So when I talk about wood smells a lot in the nose, that's the no that's what's carrying me back to all those years working for my dad. Maybe a slight bit of acetone on the nose. Oh, hot. It's a hot one. That's a hot one. Wood. Vanilla. Acetone. Little more cinnamon and black pepper. Cinnamons get a little bit more cinnamon in the palate. There is some still that black pepper still there, but the cinnamon's a little more intense there. This one's not so sweet. You do get maybe a little touch of that burnt sh brown sugar I talked about. Almost like if you took a pecan pie and you let it set too long in the oven. And you burn your pecan pie a little bit. It's that flavor right there. That burnt brown sugar. Okay, the first sip. Get your palate ready. The second sip, in this case, delivers more of what you're looking for. Brown sugar's not so burnt now. Getting barrel char. Getting oak. Don't get another maple on the palate. But I get in the nose a little bit. Cinnamon's there. Black pepper's there. A little bit of vanilla. That's a medium, little over medium finish. Medium to medium long, not quite long. It's sticking with you. That flavor so intense, it just sticks with you. I don't know how it would work with Coke, honestly. I don't think it's sweet enough. You'd have to. You might try to make something different out of this. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Make strings are not my bag. It is intense. But it's not bad. Boy, it makes you burp a little bit. That's not bad. I don't mind it. 375 is enough, though. I've had it in the little 50 mils before and bought it with 50 mils. When you just drink a 50 mil of it, it's actually better because 
and in, even in this, you just do 50 mils at a time for every once in a while, and it works great. This is not something you're going to sit down and kill the bottle. I got a feeling if you killed the bottle of this, knowing my system, my personal system, there would be some. There would be a little indigestion involved in this one. I don't get it very often, but I feel like this one would give me some indigestion. So back to what it is. This is what I think of when I think of a tough cowboy bourbon or a manly man's bourbon. You know, this is what come, this comes across. This is the appeal of this. this is what comes across as. Uh, It is something I think if you can get a 50 mil, everybody should try at least once just to see what it's about. Buy the 50 mil if you can find it. They're out there. And just so you can know what it is. Because it is it is a different, it's a different character altogether. It really is. That being said, I have to give it a letter grade. I do actually like it better than the white because I do like the richness of the flavors it brings forward. I'm going to have to bump it up to, oh, an 81. I think 81 is a good score on this. Uh, that's four grades higher than the, what I gave the white while ago. And it's four grades better than the basic white. So I think that's fair. All right. I think I said all I need to say about this one, everybody. Remember, the spirit in your glass is not running from you. Take your time. Sip and enjoy it. You'll be better for it. Everyone have a good evening. Mm -hmm.